There is no antidote to coke or speed. Whatever you're going through, you just have to go through it. I have felt my heart doing whacked out sh right? But I'd never felt anything like this. My heart is beating like crazy, but it just keeps stopping. At this point, I am fully aware, like, it's entirely possible I'm gonna die right now. Hello you beautiful citizens of YouTube. This is another one of those videos where I tell you about the really stupid things I've done in my life so that you never have to go and do those things. That's the idea of this video. Um, Because I have had a lot of people over the years ask me to make a video about what cocaine feels like. And I have tried to make that video. However, it always ends up running really long because I wanna cover everything. I wanna cover the mischievousness that it felt like when I first tried it. I wanna cover what it feels like to inject it and why it's such a bad idea. And I wanna cover what it feels like to go too far. And I can't fit all of those things into one video. So I thought I would just jump in at the deep end and tell you what a cocaine overdose feels like. Um, because honestly, if, if you're gonna try these things, you should probably start by knowing this is how it can be if you really, really do it wrong. Particularly because cocaine is a very Moorish drug. Even if you're not really enjoying it, you find a huge compulsion to keep going back and doing more and doing more and doing more. It's a big cliche about coke that everyone who's ever done it once knows. Like, I didn't much enjoy it, but I couldn't stop doing it. That's kind of the vibe. So I wanted to tell you about one of the many nights in my life where I quite possibly should have died. So let me take you back to 2005, a very long time ago, when I was in the midst of my raver phase. So this particular weekend I was going out to the goth club with a friend of mine who did not do drugs. Now this is quite important to the story. This guy, he had never even smoked a cigarette. He was always open-minded to hearing about my experiences and he didn't mind me doing drugs around him but he did not personally use anything. And what I had with me was some coke, but I knew it wasn't gonna be enough for me to just binge and binge and binge on coke all night, which I tended to do. So I was like, well, what else can I bring that's, that's gonna leave me not feeling like tetchy and like I need something at the end of the night? And honestly, if that's how you're starting to feel already when you're fairly new to doing drugs, you should probably realize you got an addictive personality, son. You need to get out of this before it gets messy. But like say, I was young. So what I brought with me was some speed as well. And I figured, look, if I do the coke and I do the speed and I keep interspersing the one with the other, it'll just feel like I've got a lot of coke in my body, right? It'll, it'll be fine. This was the first time I had ever mixed coke and speed and I was shortly to learn it was a bad mix. So we go to the club and I'm doing my thing, you know, popping off to the bathroom every like few minutes to go and do a line of this or that or the other and we have a good time and everything's fine at the club you know we're dancing we're having a nice time we're singing in each other's faces we're shouting the lyrics back at each other I always had such a good time with this guy I really miss him he moved to New Zealand a few years ago and now he goes on amazing adventures and he's so successful but I wish he hadn't have moved to New Zealand I miss him he was he was a really good friend even though we were so different he was such a good friend and we had such a great time at clubs together so anyway you know we stay until basically closing time I think and then we roll back to his place which is just a short taxi ride away about five minutes in the taxi I'm gabbling away I'm really high on coke and speed and everything seems good at this point and we get to his place and we we start watching a movie and he's eating some pizza and I'm just too wired to eat anything so I don't and eventually I, I'm starting to feel a bit a bit iffy like a bit a bit twitchy and a bit wrong and a bit like I, 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 I feel like being alone like this has always been my thing when I'm on drugs even if it's something like hallucinogens where people are always like don't trip alone if I feel weird, I'm an Aspie. I want to be alone. I want to be without other people. So I'm starting to get this, this overstimulated, twitchy, like I, I can't deal with other people kind of thing. So I'm like, look, I think I'm going to go to bed. So we turn in and he's got his bedroom kind of over here. And I'm in the guest room, which is kind of just round the corner from his. And all he has, he's moved into this house pretty recently. And all he has is like this big mattress on the floor at this point, which is probably quite a good thing, to be honest, that I was like on floor level. Um, so I lie down and 
this is when everything starts to go very wrong. Um, my heart obviously has been racing throughout the whole night because coke and speed, that's what happens, but suddenly it's skipping and it's skipping in a way that I've never felt before. Like I had been eating disordered for a long time. I'd done a lot of stimulants before. I was used to my heart doing weird shit. Like when I was eating disordered at my lowest weight, I remember incidences where my heart was going so weird. I just lay down and I genuinely didn't expect to wake up again. Like I, I have felt my heart doing whacked out shit, right? but I'd never felt anything like this. It was it was going t -t 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 -t, and then it was just stopping short. And the thing to explain here is that cocaine is one of the most dangerous drugs for your heart because it doesn't just speed up your heart, it also interrupts the electrical impulses in your heart. Like the thing that keeps your heart beating are these electrical impulses and cocaine interferes with those. So not only do you get the racing, you can get this stuttering where the, the electrical impulses go wrong and your heart misfires and it, it beats weirdly and it beats wrong and when you've got speed in your system as well obviously your heart is going super fast but it's also misfiring and this is a very very dangerous combination so my heart is beating like crazy but it just keeps stopping and I can feel the weight of it in my chest it's like it's it's just died in my chest like it suddenly feels heavy there's this pulling sensation in my chest like it's like it's just dropping through my rib cage like the organ is dead and then whoosh, it like lurches back to life again and it beats a few more times and then it dies and it beats a few more times and while this is going on I'm starting to get pains in my left shoulder and down my left arm I'm starting to lose the feeling in my hand something to point out is that I didn't have anxiety at this point in my life I am a bit of a weird case that I, I didn't have anxiety for almost all of my life and it wasn't until 2009 that I had a nervous breakdown and I got crippling anxiety that never went away. But at this point in my life, I'd never had a panic attack. I'd never been anxious. I wasn't an anxious person. And I was, I was really quite relaxed about all of this. It wasn't like I was panicking. I was just like, okay, this is weird. And as I'm losing the sensation in my hands and they're starting to tingle and go numb and I'm getting these shooting pains down my left arm, obviously, you don't have to be a genius to know these are all heart attack symptoms. I'm also starting to get really messed up in the brain, like just, just really, really dizzy and spaced out. And honestly, like my, my vision is going sparkly, even though I'm lying down. It's like, how can I feel like I'm about to pass out when I'm lying down? This is crazy. Like, I guess the blood just wasn't circulating around my body, right? Because my heart wasn't beating properly. So I'm losing the feeling in my arms my brain is is starting to go fuzzy my vision is going fuzzy and this is the point at which i'm starting to think okay this is more than just a bit of a bad drug experience this is getting dangerous this i think is ambulance time i don't think i should be alone dealing with this i think i need to go to hospital and I did have my mobile phone, yeah it was 2005, but I had my good old Nokia 3210 next to me, so I could have called an ambulance, but I knew I can't get up. I, I am barely conscious lying down, my heart is lurching like crazy in my chest, if I strain it anymore by getting up and trying to walk downstairs, I think I'm like my heart is just gonna rupture. I don't know what is gonna happen. Like I don't know about biology, but I just know putting more strain on my heart is not a good idea. So. If I had have called the ambulance, like, what would have happened? How would they have got into the house? So my other thought is, okay, do I have it in me to roll off this mattress, crawl through the door, bang on my friend's door and say, hey, uh, I need an ambulance right now. But like I said, he didn't do drugs at all. And this was the thing that like and this is so dumb like my life was literally in danger at this point or that is what it felt like it definitely didn't feel right i needed something doing but my british politeness was so extreme that i was like well 
I don't want to be this awful drugged up nuisance to my friend who lives a clean life, doesn't deal with any of this drama. I don't want to be like the drama llama druggie in his spare room who's banging on the door at half past four in the morning saying, hey, I'm overdosing on cocaine and I need an ambulance right now. Oh yeah, and here's all the drugs. Can you um, hide them or flush them or something in case we get in trouble for this? Like. I don't want to bring him into this whirlwind and again I don't know if I even have the strength to get up and crawl to his door anyway. So in the end I'm like well I guess an ambulance is out then um, because I don't want them bashing down his door and I don't want to talk to him about this and admit to this and admit that I can't handle my shit. I don't want to admit to it. So I didn't just have coke and speed that night I also had some ketamine and I knew a little bit about cocaine overdoses and speed overdoses and what I knew is that there is no medication that counteracts cocaine or speed the same way that if you overdose on an opiate they give you Narcan it blocks the effects of the opiate and you just pop straight out of it and they have to keep redosing you sure but it's an antidote there is no antidote to coke or speed. Whatever you're going through, you just have to go through it. And the only thing that, as far as I'm aware, hospitals can do if you turn up with a coke overdose is that they try and calm you down and try and slow your heart down with something like diazepam, something like benzos. So to my mind, I was like, well, look, the only thing I can do right now at home is to take ketamine and it will relax me it'll slow my heart down maybe, it'll keep me calm, I'll go to sleep and hopefully all will be well. So I just about have the energy to roll to the side of my mattress and get this wrap of ketamine out of my bag. So I tap out a really big line, like I'm shaking like crazy and my hands are half numb, I can't really feel what I'm doing, it's like half dark in the room, I tap out this huge heap of ketamine and I just tap it out onto the floor and I snort it all up and then I just lie back and I just lie there and let it suck me under and at this point I am fully aware like I don't know if this was the right thing to do it's entirely possible I'm gonna die right now my heart is still doing all this whack stuff and now I'm knocking myself out with a horse tranquilizer so I'm gonna be asleep but I don't know if I'm ever gonna come out of it again and it is weird how unconcerned I was at that point. I guess you have to bear in mind the fact that I was really only just at this point coming out of a very severe eating disorder. I was still coming out of clinical depression. I didn't really love my life. I loved doing drugs. That was the one thing I had to hold on to in my life was these weekends that I discovered doing drugs. I was... <clears throat> just discovering happiness in my life. I was only 20 years old um, and it didn't honestly concern me if I died that night. It, it didn't concern me. It was, I, I don't remember thinking, oh my god, I'm never gonna see my mom again or like, yeah. I, I wasn't thinking about any of that. I was just thinking, well, it's been interesting. At least I got to experience some happiness in the last kind of year of my life. Um, and if I go out like this, then my main, my main concern was, again, my friend. Who didn't do drugs. I felt really bad, as you would, that okay in the morning he's gonna wake up, he's gonna bang on my door, there's gonna be no response, he's gonna come in and I'm gonna be like blue, dead, with like drug wrap scattered next to me and he's gonna have to call it in and he's gonna have, he's probably gonna have his house searched and he's gonna have to deal with all of this and he he's not a part of this world he's blameless in this and he's suddenly got to deal with with this and the trauma of this that I'm putting on him this was the main thing I was thinking about was was him and him having to deal with finding my body and not knowing what had gone on and all the rest of it like that was quite embarrassing to me and that that was the main thing I was bothered about like British politeness is awful, man. Like, really, it's crippling. It could have killed me that night. And my main fear over losing my life, over not seeing my parents again, over all the loss of potential, my main fear was, oh my God, my friend is going to be put in a difficult situation because I fucked this up. Like, British politeness. It was, it was stupid, but... 
So I wasn't that concerned for myself. And I just, you know, I remember the typical ketamine stuff starting and maybe a ketamine trip report might be interesting at some point. But um, for me, if I didn't have music on, music is really what dictates what you see on experience on ketamine. So it was just silent. And if it's silent, the main thing that happens is this wave of static comes down and everything starts to drift away and you, you it feels a lot like dying anyway and in a good way it's it's you're taken away from reality and you drift into this alternate reality and you're you can't feel your body it's ketamine is technically not a hallucinogen it's a disassociative so you disassociate you come out of your body you go someplace else so this was why in a way it was a, of all the options i had which were not many it was kind of a good option to have, that it was a disassociative, it took me out of my body, so any anxiety that I was feeling about this, and although I wasn't an anxious person then, when your heart is stopping and starting and all of this, it's pretty scary. So it had taken away my own anxiety, my body was just a body at that point, my mind was wandering elsewhere and my body was left to survive, and my body fortunately was young and it had taken a beating already from my eating disorder but it was young and it was fairly healthy and so I drifted off into the abyss of ketamine and um, I woke up about an hour or so later and I didn't feel much better. I felt very drained. It felt like my body had kind of gone 10 rounds with Mike Tyson. Like my body was just exhausted. My heart was like thumping this, this exhausted like beaten sponge thump it was like I could feel the strain of every beat in my chest and I was like okay well I'm still here like my body is struggling like crazy but I'm still here um but this isn't pleasant so I rolled over tapped out another dump huge heap of ketamine did another snort and passed out and and I was still there in the morning um so I guess this is kind of a weird coke overdose experience because I wasn't awake to experience a lot of it. Thank God. I'm so glad that I didn't have to be awake all night, lying there, staring at the ceiling all by myself, thinking, am I going to die? Am I going to die? Do, 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 stop. Oh my God, am I dying? Do, do, do. Oh no, I'm not dead yet. Boop. And you know, just your heart stopping and dying all the time. And just, I'm so glad that I was able to black out that portion of the night. In the morning, I felt like crap. I remember being kind of surprised, like, okay, still here, still here. Guess you call that a win. Like, so I d didn't really care at that point if I lived or died. So it was, it was like, okay, I'm still here. There, there wasn't really any like, oh, thank God. It was, it was just like, I'm still here. Okay, well, could have gone either way. Um, but I remember getting up off the mattress and again, my heart just, just straining in my chest at the movement. Anyway, um, I didn't tell him. I never told him about this at all because again, I felt so stupid about it. And so like, he doesn't put himself in this kind of danger. I shouldn't bring this kind of danger to him. So I, you know, I was just kind of quiet and I didn't really have much energy and I felt kind of nauseous and just exhausted. Like, even though I'd slept because of the ketamine, my body was exhausted. And, um, but me being me, uh, when we went to the cinema later that day, I did a bit more coke that day. I had a bit more and I did a bit in the cinema, just rubbed it on my gums and oh my god bad move everything just came back again and it was even worse for being upright in a cinema chair i just remember like slouching down in my cinema chair my heart like straining in my chest and thinking oh my god here we go again but at this point i thought well look i survived this once and um you know i'm sitting down i'm in a cinema if it gets worse he's right next to me my friend i, I can tap him on the arm and go ambulance please i'll explain later but um you know, I just sat there. I literally don't even remember what the movie was. Most of it, I was just sitting there, like, feeling my heart straining in my chest, thinking, come on, we've survived this once. Come on, just, just settle down. And after the majority of the movie was over, everything settled down. But, um, how stupid can you be? You know, to, to, 
feel to literally be convinced you're about to die the night before to survive it to feel awful and then to still stuff more coke in your body like that is how much of a moorish drug it is that that is the danger of it um and yeah never never mix coke and speed do not like even though they both seem well they're both stimulants so why shouldn't you throw them together don't it's a bad move so uh that's what it feels like when you take too much it feels like an awful heart attack. I don't know if I did have a minor heart attack. I don't know because I didn't go to hospital so I don't know what was going on that night but I do know that in all of the stupid things I've done to myself and all the things I felt my heart do I have never felt my heart do anything as scary as it did that night. That's the only one where I've genuinely seriously considered calling an ambulance British politeness so I am here by I would say the grace of having a young body at that point. If that was the kind of thing that I was doing to myself now at age 35, I don't think I would have made it through the night. I mean, it's weird. So, you know, sometimes you don't feel lucky about it. Sometimes when you have mental health issues and things aren't going well and you look back at things like this and you think, was I lucky though? Was it worth it? Wouldn't it have just saved me a lot of hassle in life if I if I had have just just slipped away that night and that had been the end of it I wouldn't have minded at the time um and there's a lot of crappy stuff I would have avoided but there's also a lot of really beautiful stuff I would have missed you know I never would have got to know any of you guys I never would have realized you know what look there's there's a place for me in the world where I fit I never would have discovered my characters I never would have started writing I never would have discovered I was good at anything. Um, I never would have come to love certain people. I never would have discovered so many things and lived so many happy days. And so seriously, even if you are kind of like I was and you're reckless because you don't care what happens to you, you're not very happy. The only time you're happy is when you're on drugs. So if you die, you die. You know, if that's how you feel about it, just know that that's probably not how you'll always feel and yeah there will be shit times in the future there are shit times in everyone's future life is a roller coaster all the time and there are always going to be bad times but there are going to be a lot of good times and speaking from experience and speaking from seeing so many suffering sad miserable teenagers on the eating disorder forum the majority of us are happy now so many people are married with kids or doing creative pursuits you know loving themselves and loving their lives and things get better so if you end up in this situation, call the ambulance, please. Um, flush your drugs if you can and call the ambulance um, and get out of it alive. So yeah, in essence, before I can waffle anymore, uh, going too far with coke is a horrible experience that if I had have cared about life would have been terrifying. Um, and I'm lucky to still be here. And uh, yeah, if you have any similar experiences or you actually did go to hospital for a coke or speed overdose, I would be fascinated to know what they did with you and what the actual protocol for dealing with that is and how you're supposed to deal with it as opposed to me snorting ketamine off the floor and <laughs> passing out and think, well, I'll wake up or I won't, you know, who knows? That was not the way to go about it. So um, yeah, kind of lucky to be here, I guess. Um, Anna, with that said, I will shut up. Anna, let you guys tell your similar disaster tales below if you feel like it. So uh, thanks for listening over and out. Bye-bye. <laughs>